everybody, it's Rose, and today we're continuing the ironing and stash review series. So today we're going to get through, um, I'd say another, I don't know, 40, 50 diamond paintings, I think. And um, that still leaves a lot of diamond paintings to go. So we've probably got another, oh, a good four or five videos after today's. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. And uh, let's get into ironing diamond paintings. Okay, so um, the next one that we're going to do is number 451. This is Sunflowers. Uh, it's 25 by 35, and it came from New Homie. And I'm not going to bother ironing it because there's really nothing wrong with it. Next we have what I call Red Mermaid, also from New Homie. This is number 452. And um, once again, it is fine. I don't need to iron that. That's going to be just fine. Next up is number 453. I call it Aurora Borealis. And oh, let's get it in the camera there. Um, this one is square drills. The other two that we looked at, I think, were round. Yeah, they're both round. So this one's square. I like squares, uh, I must say. Although, it's nice to be able to go fast with rounds. But, yeah, I like squares. Anyway, so this one here, I think, will look nice when it's done. Uh, it's got 23 colors. Eh, could definitely have done with a few more colors. Next up is another uh, 40 by 50 canvas um, that is called, well, this is number 454. I call it Sunflowers number two, since I just showed you Sunflowers number one. And um, I think it's beautiful. I just, I love this one. And this one here, as we see, has some wrinkles. So let's get those out. And before we do that, I'm just going to put these away. Okay, so my iron is hot. I have wet my cloth. It is very wet. Um, I just squeezed a little bit of water out of it. I didn't really wring a lot of water out of it. And um, so we're just, whoops, I'm working. I had to get my extension cord out from under some books. Um, can't remember what I was going to say. Yeah, okay, so the iron is set at uh, wool temperature. Um, I don't know what that equals in other temperatures. I've got my tea towel uh, folded over. And, oh, I did say that this, this time what I was going to do was put a piece of cloth, I'll just get a towel or something, um, and put it underneath the diamond painting because somebody asked about um, how ironing on the granite compared to ironing on an ironing board and I kind of wondered that too okay so I've just got a big bath towel here and uh, I'm just gonna fold it in half there we go So that will just give it, I don't know, a little bit, a little bit more um, cushioning, maybe. I don't know. I don't know whether we need it or not. Um, but we're gonna try it. I'm not sure if I like if I like it actually, but we'll see. Yeah, that's good and hot. Now, I don't like it because the plastic on the bottom, um, you know, I'm not going to use the towel because the plastic slides too much on the towel. So we'll just go back to just the plain cloth. Okay. The 
There we go. Okay. And yeah, okay, so we see some marks on the back of the canvas. That's just the plastic on the front that wasn't completely flat. Um, so the canvas itself is fine and to to drill this is going to be just fine. Not a problem at all. Okay. Now I'm going to get another cloth uh, because I want to dry the canvas as well before I lay it down in a or before I put it in the folder that I'm going to store it in. So I just want to make sure that uh, it's not going in there wet because I don't want it to get moldy or anything. Now, if you were just going to be ironing one or two canvases, or if I was, I would just leave these somewhere flat to dry so that uh, I didn't have to worry about um, about them becoming moldy. I don't know whether they'd become moldy. I wouldn't want to take the chance. Okay, so that's still a little bit moist because I had that cloth on there for a long time. Um, I won't be doing this all the time, but let's just... And I don't know if you saw that or not, but my cloth was actually sticking to the canvas. It's not that the canvas is melting, but there's something wet that uh, reacts with the materials, so the materials become a little bit, I don't know, soggy or something? And there is actually residue that's left on my cloths, so my cloths, both of them, are going to become quite stiff after, you know, 15 or 20 can uh, canvases, and so I'll have to change them. But there you go. So this is beautifully, beautifully flat now. Love it. And, okay, so our next stunning painting here is a dragon. I call it the green dragon. Uh, this one came from FG Normal. It's number 456. So we jumped some because the last one, the last one was number 454. Number 455 is either one that I've done, so it's not in this pile anymore, or it's a larger size or a smaller size. Um, Cause I've been putting the ones that I get from New Homie, uh, FG Normal, etc., in one of three folders. So there's my tiny projects, which is 30 by 30 canvas and less. There's my small projects and medium sized projects, like the ones that we're doing right now. And then there's my big projects that are longer than 60 centimeters. Okay, so this one here is actually fine. I'm not going to iron it. Um, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with it. Like there's little divots here, but I think that's from where the toolkit was. That, those are not wrinkles, nothing that I'm worried about. So that's gonna go away. Next up we have this one, which I, I thought was just so delightful when I saw it on the FG Normal website. And this is, Number 458, um, I call it Undersea Christmas Tree. The uh, drill area for this is 45 by 35, which I think will give good definition to the shells and so forth uh, decorating the tree. I think this one's gonna look really, really nice. I'm not gonna do it this year, I might do it next year. And I'm not going to iron this because those mail increases, they're pretty much completely flattened out. So I'm not going to mess with it. Next up is one that I think is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, she's number 460. I call her beauty number one. She's also from FG Normal. And uh, yeah, I just, I think she's just stupidly beautiful. Um, yeah, she's gorgeous. So I think she's going to turn out really well. She looks better through the camera, of course, than uh, in real life. But 
from a distance because I'm not very far away. I'm probably about 18 inches away from her. Um, from a distance, she's going to look spectacular. So I just love this one. Next up, we have uh, another one. This is a sort of fall theme diamond painting. And I'm just going to flatten this plastic a little bit. So this is one that um, you'll see is partially drilled here because I received um, a drill ruler. And so I actually tested the drill ruler um, by drilling a small area of the canvas. So that's why this one is partially partially started. Um, there's nothing wrong with it on the back, so I'm not going to iron that. Next up, we have uh, number 467, the Purple Geisha. And I got to tell you, I just love her. She is so beautiful. And um, the cover plastic has a few little wrinkles in it. I'm not going to worry about them if the back is good. And the back is good. There's nothing here that needs ironing. So we're not going to iron that. I think she's gorgeous. I love the definition around her collar and all the ornaments in her hair and the cherry blossoms and everything. So beautiful. Oh, wow. Love it. Here we have a rose tries. Uh, no, it's not. This is not a rose tries. Uh, this is um, one that I got because I fell in love with it. I call it Cranes on Blue. It's number 468 from New Homie. And um, I just, I fell in love with it. And so I am very happy with this. Turned out just the way I like. And it doesn't need any ironing. It's good. Coming up next is another one in the same theme. I call this one number, uh, well, this one is number 469. I call it Cranes Flying. Um, it's 35 by 35, as was the other one. And it is also from New Homie. And I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, this one here, it has some wrinkles. I, Not wrinkles, but they're male increases and I am going to iron that those out because they're just a little bit more than I would like to see. So the first thing I'm going to do, which I forgot to do on the first diamond painting, is just make sure that the plastic is perfectly flat. Because if the plastic's not perfectly flat, you're going to iron creases into the plastic, which really doesn't matter. But what the heck? Um, if we're going to do it, may as well do it right. There we go. So I'm actually pushing out some of the creases that were already in it. And my cloth's still wet enough. Now I have the cloth folded over because what I have found is if I don't fold the cloth, um, it dries out too fast. Okay, and I think I have to I think I have to keep the same side down all the time on the canvases because um, there is a residue that they pick up from the canvas, the cloth, and that residue gets onto my iron. So to avoid that, I'm just going to make sure I iron with uh, the same side down all the time. I don't mind if the canvases share residue amongst themselves, but it's not necessarily great for my iron, and it uh, prevents the iron from moving smoothly. So that's something else to keep in mind. Now, if I wanted to, I could have just used a thicker towel, and um, instead of you know constantly uh, re-wetting this towel. Oh, that's nice. Um, but uh, but I'm fine with just using this towel and keeping on soaking it because what I'm doing at the same time is rinsing some of that um, stuff that comes off on it out of it but I will not be able to use this cloth for the entire 
set of diamond paintings that I'm going to be ironing today because uh, they're just, there's just going to be too much residue. So when these cloths that I've been using to iron dry, they, they dry very stiff. So I don't know what it is that they use on the canvases, but whatever it is that makes those canvases stiff, it makes cloth stiff as well. So yeah, okay, so I think that's good enough. And now we'll just iron that dry as much as possible. I think I might have permanently ironed creases in some of these tea towels by the end of this exercise. There are a lot of diamond paintings that I'm ironing. It's not very hot. Why is this not? It's hot. Okay. I'm sure you can hear that. That's that residue that's sticking to the back of the cloth. There we go. Okay. So it's still a little wet down here, so I'm just going to do a little bit more ironing at the bottom. There we go. So that's nice and flat now. And, you know, I wouldn't have to worry if I was planning on framing this, which I'm not. But if I were planning on framing this, I wouldn't worry that there would be creases left uh, that would mar the finished uh, image. Okay, so our next diamond painting is one in a series that I absolutely love. I call them abstract trees. And uh, this one is number 473. It's abstract tree number three. I got it from New Homey. Oh, and that residue is all over my counter. So I'm going to have to wipe my counter soon. Um, and the plastic is nice and flat. And I mean, I could iron this, I suppose. I'm going to iron it just because I don't like these creases here. So let's get to it. And I'm pressing very, very hard. Now, for, I can't remember who it was who asked, you know, why am I ironing on a counter instead of on my ironing board, um, it's for a couple of reasons. The main one is that my ironing board is probably 40 or 50 years old. I've had it ever since I was, like, before I even moved out of my parents' house. And, um, and uh, it makes a lot of noise. Like, it's all metal. And so you hear clinking and clanging and stuff like that. And so I just wanted to have... Um, I just wanted to use something that wasn't going to have distracting noises. And I think I have to turn this up just a tiny, tiny bit. I turned it up just like two tiny notches. There's probably about a hundred notches on this iron. And so I just turned it up like just a few degrees. But uh, And that's because I turned it down from the setting that it was at when I picked it up today. Um, because I thought, oh, that's a little bit higher than wool. But I think last time when I was ironing, I took it up a little bit higher than wool um, after trying it on wool for quite a while. Because I thought, no, nah, it's not quite doing the job I want it to do. And so we'll just notch it up a couple of degrees. And somebody was asking about 
the labels that I use. So I buy these labels at um, at uh, the dollar store. Um, I also have labels that I bought on Amazon. They're just file folder labels. And recently I bought myself a Dymo file labeler. Um, look, it prints files, file labels. It prints um, mailing labels. Uh, you know, including the great big ones that, you know, you get like on Amazon packages and stuff. Anyway, it, it's it's a file label print. It's a label printer. And I, um, I'm i just using up my, my supply of old of the labels that I had before I got it. Um, so, I mean, I like these. I, I like, I would prefer them a little bit bigger. And you can get them bigger. And the Amazon ones are bigger. Um, I'll just show you what I mean. So these ones cost like a buck twenty-five Canadian at Amazon, not at Amazon, uh, at the dollar store, and um, and yeah, I mean they don't stick as well as I would like. So uh, so I'm sometimes I have to tape them down. But anyway, all right. Next up, uh, we have something else that I sort of have a theme. And it is stained glass flowers. I love stained glass looking diamond paintings. Love them, love them, love them. And so I've got a whole bunch of them. This is number 474. I got it at New Homie. And um, I really, really like it. Oh, and I could feel that there was nothing on the back that needed ironing, but I'll just show you nothing on the back. Okay, our next one is uh, one that I got two of by accident, um, and I did one of them already. So we'll see that when we get to my uh, video on projects completed in 2020. Uh, this one is Blue Deer number two. I got this one from Craftsy Art. Uh, it is 35 by 25 drill area, and it is it turns out really, really nice. Um, so if you like this kind of thing, yeah, get it. Um, yeah, it turns out really well. And I'm not going to iron this. There's nothing here that concerns me. Uh, those, those wrinkles, those small nail increases would, uh, not be a problem, uh, after drilling. So I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Next up. We have another one in the stained glass series, and this is stained glass poppies. Uh, and this is another one that I bought two of um, by accident. Uh, so this one I also got from Craftsy Art. It's number 480. And um, I think I did the other one of this, and it turned out beautiful. Like I say, I think because I've done so many diamond paintings in the last few months that um, I'm starting to lose track. Uh, which is why I have a very detailed um, tracking system. Now, all I'm doing here is just flattening up the plastic, which is not 100% flat. Um, but the diamond painting itself, I'm not going to worry about ironing uh, because, first off, it doesn't need it. And second off, I've already done one of these. So, like, in the greatest of all worlds, I would not be hanging two of them. Okay, so this is another one in a series, and it is uh, my series of cat tapestries. So I started one of my very first diamond paintings. I think it might have been number, I don't know, five or six, was um, a cat tapestry. And it was a big one. It was, I think, 65 by 80 or something like that. And it was the biggest diamond painting I had ever done. It was square drills, and I absolutely loved everything about it loved 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 everything about it and became a huge fan of the cat tapestries so i now own as many of the cat tapestries as possible and i own them in every uh style that they come in so if they come as a uh, special shape like this one i buy them and if they come in round or square, I buy them. Now, I do prefer square diamond paintings. Uh, so, like, I won't necessarily buy a big one. Because um, I always buy the uh, regular drill, like the square drill or the round drill. I buy them in the biggest size that they have available. Um, 
Not that I'm ever going to hang them, but I just love the detail that I get out of them. And um, so this one is a 34 by 43 drill area. Uh, so it is advertised as a 40 by 50. Well, it's a 40 by 50 canvas. So I just think this is gorgeous. And uh, I do have the other one of this in a 60 by 80 or a 60 by 90, maybe a 60 by 80 uh, square drill that I got um, last year sometime. And I just absolutely love this image. I call her Grumpy Cat. And um, I, I'm so looking forward to doing the big one. Now this one here has some wrinkles on the back. So I will iron, I will iron it. Um, I have to wet my cloth and then I'm just going to wipe this white residue off of my counter at the same time. So I, I do see now that it is a white residue and, um, when I was ironing in my last video, some of the plastic covers, when I finished ironing, they had a white residue on them and I wasn't sure what that was, but now I can see very, very clearly that it is uh, the residue from ironing. So, um, so now I know. And now you know too. So again, the cloth is very, very wet. I rinsed it as well as I could to get as much of that residue off because it was becoming quite stiff. And um, I don't want to, uh, I think I had it the other way. Yeah, I had it the other way. Um, I don't want to uh, use, I just don't want to use as many cloths as, as I would need to if I wasn't carefully rinsing this every time. So, there we go. Yeah, that's perfect. That's just perfect. Yeah, it doesn't, some of them don't need a lot. I mean, they're all made with slightly different canvases. Uh, so you get a slightly different effect when you iron them. Um, and this formulation for the canvas uh, works very, very well in terms of, uh, it doesn't take much to iron. Yeah, that's good. And there's still a little bit of sticky to it from the residue that comes off on the cloth, but it's not too bad. So there it is. It's uh, nice and flat. There's still a little bit of crinkles along the edges, but those edges, even if I were to, I, like, even if I were to frame them, those edges would never show. So I'm not gonna stress about that. Okay, next up is another one in the stained glass series. So this one I call stained glass bird and flowers. Uh, it's a 30 by 40 canvas, 25 by 34 drill area. And I just absolutely love this. This one comes from GBFKE. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but the grumpy cat that we just looked at a minute ago came from uh, Craftsy Art. So I will iron this. Uh, I just want to make sure that the plastic is flat. And I think it is. I'm not going to get it, give it a, a really long iron because it really doesn't have too much wrong with it. Oh, and I'm ironing on the wrong side of the cloth. Oh, well. Yeah, see, that, that's all it took. And now it's, and now it's done. And it looks fantastic. Love it. Okay, and the last one in this batch is another one of the Beauty series. So this is number 483, Beauty number two. I got her from GBFKE. And I love her, I love the colors. And I'm not gonna bother ironing this one because the male increases are so minor that it's not going to affect the uh, finished diamond painting in any way. Okay, so next 
next up, uh, we have, um, it's, it's a diamond painting that I got because I loved the image, but then when I got, but I was afraid that it was going to be too pixelated and um, in this size. And sure enough, it is a beautiful image. It actually looks great through the camera, so it might look all right uh, when it's drilled from a distance. But um, this was one of my first orders from New Homey. Uh, it's number 411. Uh, what I, I call this one the Red Tree of Life Tapestry. Uh, this is a 25 by 49 drill area uh, and it's round drills and when I did the unboxing for this like I said it really doesn't look good and a lot of the viewers agreed it doesn't really look good new homie reads all of the comments uh, for my unboxing videos of their products and so they asked well we'll make it in a bigger size for you if you want and so I asked for it in a size uh, 100 by by 50 so 50 across and 100 um, up and down and so he did he made it in the bigger size uh, and um, and so I got that one as well and I recently unboxed it and it is out of this world beautiful and um, so I mean this this one is no longer for sale but the biggest one the bigger one is available and it is just outrageously gorgeous so I'm not going to iron this one um, the male increases are very, very mild. Uh, well, I don't know. I'll wire it. What the heck? Um, yeah, sometimes when the male increases are really, really minimum, minimal, it, I don't know that it's really worth ironing them, but since it's an ironing video, what the heck, I'll iron it. That's really all it needs. And there we go. Yeah, I really like working with New Homey. And actually, I forgot to place my order with them this week. So after I record, like after I finish recording this video and um, doing the editing on it, I will be placing my next order with New Homey. So looking forward to that. Because I'm sure they have some great stuff. And I have a bunch of Rose Tries requests that I want to um, fulfill. So I think I'll order some Rose Tries. Depends on what I'm in the mood for. Like with the with Rose Tries. Uh, for those of you who don't watch my regular unboxing videos, um, I will open diamond paintings that people ask me to uh, from the stores that I work with. And if you're interested in which stores those are, uh, they're listed in the description below this video and the instructions on you know how to get a um, diamond painting to me uh, to try um, is in the description as well you don't actually send me the diamond painting what you do is you send me a link to the diamond painting and you know if if i decide that it's something that's going to look that's going to be interesting for my channel then i will order it and i will unbox it and show everything about it so that you can decide whether to buy it or not so um this one here is number 485 it is number it is the, the blue lilies and it is from, it's a square drill diamond painting from GBFKE. I thought it would look really pretty and I thought it would look nice in this size and it does look fantastic through the camera. So, um, and you know what, these little bit, these little creases here, they really don't need ironing and so I'm not going to mess with this one. I'm just going to let it go back into the folder and we'll call that one. Good. All right. Next up is number 488. This one is Bicycle and Flowers. Uh, this one is a Rose Tries. Um, and I, I got to tell you, I'm not excited about bicycle diamond paintings. Just not. 
So this is actually going to be the only one that I order. Uh, I, I need to get back in touch with the person who uh, sent me a request for a second one um, that she she wanted me to un, unbox for her. Um, but I, I just, I don't like bicycles. I'm sorry. It's not that I don't like bicycles. I just don't like pictures of bicycles. So, um, so I'm not going to do a second one. Um, when this one comes up, I'll, I'll drill it. Um, but, uh, but I just, I can't bear to think of doing two bicycles. So yeah, no, it came through shipping very, very well. It feels completely flat. The only thing is I've got a little bit of an air pocket here, which I want to work out. And there we go. That's it. Um, and there's a little bit of pocket there. Okay, so if there's going to be any creasing in this, it's going to be right along where that air pocket was. So uh, yeah, there's a little tiny bit of creasing here. So I will iron that out. Um, Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time ironing this one because that crease will not need a lot of ironing. It's just just a little something to help it flatten out. Yeah, it's still not perfect. I mean, I'm sure you can see that, uh, but it's not. It's ironed enough that it's not going to cause a problem drilling. Because the reason that I'm ironing these canvases is that if you leave a canvas unironed that has major creases in it, those creases will not come out just from drilling. And so what you're going to have is a finished canvas where you can see the creases. Um, and some of those creases look pretty bad. Now, I will be doing a video where I iron some of my finished products because you can absolutely iron finished diamond paintings and some people actually iron all of their finished diamond paintings because they believe that um, it'll help the adhesive uh, stick to the diamonds better or the diamonds stick to the adhesive better. I'm not sure about that but um, I, I do know that it, it's perfectly okay to iron a diamond painting after you get it. Now I recently opened, I think it was a, di a Diamond Dots kit, and they specifically say uh, in their instructions that, they, that their diamond paintings should never be ironed, so not at any time. And so I will not be ironing the um, Diamond Dots kits before or after I drill them. So this one here is number 492, it's another Rose Tries. Um, I call it Hogwarts or Hogwarts Starry Night. Not a Harry Potter fan here. Um, 44 by 34 uh, square drill, and I got it from Your Best Deals. Now I have just ordered another um, Harry Potter themed diamond painting uh, at the request of a viewer. So it was another Rose Tries. So that'll probably be showing, I don't know. Uh, whenever I get the order. Um, but just saying to everybody out there, probably won't be doing any more Harry Potter themed uh, rose tries, just simply because it's not my thing. I don't mind doing one or two in a series, you know, of, of a theme that I don't particularly myself love, but I don't want to have a stash that's full of stuff that I, that I don't love. This is another Rose Tries. This one is number 495. I call it Lotus number one. Uh, it was a request from a viewer who sent me a whole bunch of requests in a single email. And so I've ordered probably six or 10 of the ones that she, uh, that she included in that list. And I just got back in touch with her to say, I'm not gonna order the others because they're sort of the same in many respects. Um, as the ones that I already ordered. And um, anyway, I love this. I fell in love with this series of diamond paintings because you'll see some more in this uh, series. Um, fell in love with it. So I was perfectly happy to order pretty much all the ones that she and somebody else sent me. Uh, and it is perfect on the back. So I'm not gonna iron it. 
Okay, next up uh, is another theme that I don't personally love. I know a lot of people love cottages. And so this is a cottage. It's number 496. I call it cottage number one. It was a rose tries. Uh, it's a 40 by 50 canvas, 44 by 34 drill area, square drill canvas. And um, so I, I ordered it. I've actually, I think I've made like three cottage orders. This might be the only one that's been unboxed so far. I'm waiting for the others to come in. Uh, but again, I'm not sure how many more cottages I'm going to do because they're really not my thing. Um, but, you know, if you find a beautiful cottage picture and you, you know, you want me to try it before you buy it, uh, you can send it to me. And if I decide I like it, then I will let you know that I'm going to order it. If I, if it's not something that I think will turn out or uh, I just don't you know, love it myself, then I'm just going to tell you, eh, I'm not going to order that one. Um, so there you go. And it is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. These creases here, they're not going to cause any problems at all. So I'm just going to put it away. Okay, next up. Oh, I can't show you this one uh, because it's a copyright image. And this was another Rose Tries. And I got to tell you, I absolutely hated it right from the moment of seeing it in the person's email. And I ordered it because I thought, oh, maybe it'll turn out okay. I hate it. And uh, since it's copyright, I can't show it to you anyway. Um, I didn't realize it was copyright until I posted the video and then somebody got in touch with me and said, you know, that's a copyrighted image from, you know, another diamond painting store. And it's like, no, I didn't know that. So I had to re-edit the video and repost it. So uh, I spent hours and hours and hours re-editing um, videos when, when there's copyright issues that I didn't catch in advance because I'm not aware of what everybody's selling. So I do appreciate it when people let me know that, you know, I inadvertently ordered a diamond painting that is licensed to another store or is copyright or something. And I will happily either take down the video or I take down the video and re-edit it to take that, you know, image out and then repost it. So do please, if you see something and you know that it's a copyright image or a licensed image, let me know um, because I don't want copyright strikes. And, you know, I do my best to avoid copyright strikes by, you know, researching most of the images. But like, I thought that image was just so ugly there was no way that I thought that it was a copyrighted image. So I didn't even check. Uh, this one, by the way, is another Rose Tries. Uh, it's $4.99. I call it Dancer. Um, it's from New Homie. And I quite like it. Now, it the, uh, the person who asked me to try it for her uh, said she doesn't think there's enough colors in it. And, um, you know, that's fair. Uh, the original artwork has more colors. Uh, which you can see from the thumbnail, but you know, um, that's fine. I tried it for her. Now she knows when she wants it. Okay, so next up is another Rose Tries. Uh, this one is number 501. I call it Waterfall Number One. Um, not an image that I personally loved, um, but you know, I decided I'll try it for the person because you know, she was interested in, uh, in knowing what it was like. And so I figured, what the heck, I'll try it for her. Um, I am not sure that I love the way this came out. Uh, I, I don't know that there's enough colors. There's only 20 colors. And sorry, I'm trying to get the plastic perfectly flat, but, but that's not happening. Um, yeah, it, I think it's a little too pixelated, which is, you know, it's unfortunate, but that's why, uh, she wanted me to try it with, you know, are there enough colors and is it going to turn out too pixelated in the size that it was offered in? And the answer is there's not enough colors. And yes, it turned out to my impression, way too pixelated. Um, what I really didn't like about it was this waterfall here. There should be a whole bunch of color gradation in there. And if there were more colors you could get, 
a finer, like it, you could get it to look more real. It actually doesn't look bad through the camera, but it doesn't, it doesn't look great. I don't love it. Um, and it's perfectly fine. It doesn't need to be on. Okay. So this next one, uh, another Rose Tries. This is number 502. It is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And um, it's a 40 by 50 canvas, uh, 35 by 45 drill area. It is round drills. It came from New Homey. And this is spectacular. Now, I don't love the Disney theme myself. This was a very meaningful diamond painting uh, image to um, to the viewer who requested it and uh, even before knowing that like I was perfectly happy to try it out um, and uh, it is absolutely fantastic so I say I don't love Disney images to tell you that I am going to love doing this one and I can hardly wait to show you this one uh, when it's done and when it comes up in a penny pick so this one here I can feel it has some mail increases in it uh, and they were, you know, quite serious mail increases. So, um, you know, I did flatten the plastic when I got the diamond painting originally to try and, to try and flatten out those creases as much as possible, uh, while I had it, you know, just in the folder, because, you know, putting them in the folder does help to flatten out creases as long as the plastic is flat. Um, but those creases haven't completely come out, so I'm going to iron this. Okay, but first I want to make sure that there are no bubbles, because those bubbles will actually uh, make the creases um, even more severe. So, this is going to be fairly easy to do. Um, I just really have to focus on those areas where the creases are. So uh, I don't have to iron the whole diamond painting, and so I'm not going to iron the whole diamond painting. I'm just going to iron the creases out because everything else is just fine. And let's see how that worked. Perfect. Yeah, so those creases... I mean, they look nasty, and if you were to ever drill the diamond painting with those creases in it, uh, what you'll end up with is a diamond painting that has the dip where the crease was. Um, and what I learned recently, because I, I uh, didn't iron a diamond painting that had those serious creases in it. Um, oh, and look, that crease wants to come back. So I'm just going to go over it again. Um is that you can iron those creases out after the diamond painting is done, which is what I did with Lily, number 448, uh, which I posted the post-completion video recently. And I, uh, in the video, I show myself ironing it uh, after it's done. And so you can go back and watch that. It was just posted in the last week or two. Well, in the last week, I think. I think it was posted Monday, um, December, whatever, 6th or 7th or whatever, whatever day of the month that was. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was a Monday video. Anyway, uh, it's very recent. Just go back. It's a big pink lily. And uh, you can skip ahead if you don't like post-completion reviews and just go to the part where I am ironing it and show it after it's ironed. So, yeah, that's that's nice and flat now. And I got to... Uh, wet my cloth again. All right. So again, I'm just trying to get the dry tea towel to absorb as much of the wetness uh, moisture from uh, the previous tea towel as possible because uh, I don't know what that substance is that um, you know causes the the residue, but whatever it is, I don't want it to um, get moldy. So that flattened out perfectly. 
So those serious mail increases, they are no more. This is gonna be a delight to do. Okay, so next up is another uh, fall theme diamond painting, uh, which I'll do next fall. Um, I call this, this is number 503, I call it Fall Cornucopia because I'm not sure you can see it, but this is a cornucopia. Um, not enough colors to this, there are 20 colors. This would be better off with more colors so that that cornucopia uh, would have some better definition. Um, and so this one came from GBFKE, it's round drills. I mean, I, I quite like it. Um, like I really like the image, which I will show you the thumbnail of. Hold on, let's see if this will focus. I'm not sure you're really seeing it, but anyway, uh, that's it. Um, I, I, I mean, I quite like the, the image. Uh, the cornucopia really didn't turn out well. A lot of the greenery here really didn't turn out well. It just doesn't have enough colors. So, um, so that's, that's unfortunate, but other than that, like, it's not that it's pixelated because I don't see it as pixelated. I just see it as not having enough color. And I'm, you know what? I'm just not going to bother with ironing this one. It's not so bad that I would be concerned. And if, uh, if after I drill it, probably, I don't know, maybe next year, maybe years from now, um, if it still has any little minor creases in it, I'll just iron it after I finish it. Okay, so that is the end of this folder, and we've been going for an hour. Um, I don't know whether I want to start the next folder or not. Hmm. Um, hmm. Hmm. No, I'm not going to start the next folder. So that's it for this video. So probably after I edit it, it'll probably be, I don't know, 45 minutes or something like that. I try to make these longer for you because I know you guys like to diamond paint while, while I'm uh, talking. But, um, but yeah, I, I think I've had enough for today. So, so, uh, so that's it. I still have to edit this thing and editing it is going to take probably an hour and a half. So, uh, so that's like, you know, two and a half hours for your video, which I expect that you're going through at double speed. So that's a lot of time that I invest to give you a short little video. Okay, that's it. Um, I will be back tomorrow with another diamond painting video. I believe tomorrow's video will be an unboxing from a brand new company. Well, at least it's new to me. Uh, and I am super excited about uh, bringing you that. So I want to say thank you to everyone who helps this video come together, which means you. Uh, because uh, without you, I would not bother making these videos. I make them for your entertainment and I hope they do entertain you. I also want to thank all of the companies who send me their beautiful diamond paintings so that I can uh, try them out and show them to you and uh, who let me, you know, uh, continue the Rose Tries program uh, by sending me diamond paintings that you guys want to see. So uh, please keep that up. Send me emails at ramblingrosedp. The address is up on your screen. And uh, yeah, take care. Have a great day, everybody. And do come back and visit with me again tomorrow. Bye-bye for now. Bye.